How many of you? Uh, how many of you walked in today, like kind of scared and excited at the same time? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I remember. Uh, I remember like six years ago I did the same thing. Like what you're doing today, I did the same thing and I was like really excited but I was also scared to death. I was like, am I going to be judged? You know, who's going to be watching me? So I had like all of these fears and so I want to congratulate you on actually being here because when you look at courage, courage isn't the absence of being fearful. Courage is actually being scared to death and doing it anyway. So congratulations on actually having courage and actually taking the first step to start changing your life. Now I'm going to tell you this, uh, at the end of the 28 days you are not going to arrive. And that's actually really good news because what I found for me after 28 days, I was uh, better, I was nowhere where I, where I needed to be and actually six years later and I'm getting older and I'm 40 years of age, I'm actually still getting better, more fit, more in shape, have more muscle even though like most people would say, hey you're 40, you're well past your prime. So, you guys are going to be amazed at what's going to happen in 28 days, but really the amazing thing, the magical thing that happens is once you guys actually stick to it and keep applying these principles. So the 28 days is not a destination, but the 28 days is a great place for you to be able to start. Now, I know you guys are excited for nutrition. I know that you guys are excited about fitness, right? You guys are excited? We're going to go over some, some awesome principles with you, but I'm going to tell you this. Can I? Listen, you guys walked in here and, and, I, and I guarantee none of you said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to actually quit this in like 10 days. That's a, I'm just going to quit in 10 days. <laughs> right? Did anybody walk in and say, I'm, I am focused on quitting, you know, within the next couple of days. All of you came in with the mindset like, like what? I, I can do this. I'm, I'm going to finish. The reality is, is that not everyone will be here at the end of the 28 days. My question to you is, is who's going to be? And no, everyone's like, it's not going to be me. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to look around the room. Look at all these different people. You can like wave. You can give an awkward eye contact with them. This is what I found is these people that are here in the room, they have the potential to be some of your best friends. They really do. And these are, because these are the people that you're going to, do something epic with. These are gonna, the people that you're going to suffer with. These are the people who actually want nothing more for you to be just as successful as them. And I guarantee that will happen if you let it. So those people that are sitting next to you, those people that you wave to, those people that you made the awkward eye contact with, <laughs> they, they actually need you. They need you to follow through and they need you to finish. Now listen, I'm going to give, can I give you a tip today? that has nothing to do with nutrition and fitness, that's actually the most important thing that can guarantee your success. Is that okay? All right. Has nothing to do with nutrition, has nothing to do with fitness. It's this. How many of you have actually said, you know, the reason why I'm where I'm at is because I just haven't found the right plan. Or I haven't found something that I liked or, or I, you know, I just haven't found the time to do this. How many of you have said that? If you're not raising your hand, I know that you're lying. Come on. Let's all be real, real with one another. So a lot of times we blame where we're at in our life because we haven't found the right strategy, right? Let me tell you something. Strategy doesn't matter one bit. The plan does not matter one bit if you don't change the mindset. Strategy really, really doesn't matter. Now listen, how many of you have actually uh, watched bullfighting? You're sick. Why would you watch this? This is terrible. Okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an analogy and hopefully it makes sense. But, you know, here's the thing. In the, in the spectacle of bullfighting, the, the, the success of the bull, which is life or death, depends on uh, what he's convinced is the problem, right? If he's convinced that the cape is the problem, he loses. But if he, uh, if he can convince himself that the person holding the cape, that's the real problem and actually attack him instead, then he wins. He gets to see another day. But how many times do we chase the wrong thing? We're looking for the grapefruit diet. We're looking for the uh, Zumba. We're looking for just something bizarre, you know, because, well, maybe this is the right strategy. 
I just haven't found it yet. But let me tell you something, strategy doesn't matter if you don't have the right mindset. And by mindset I mean this, that you are 100% all in, that you're 100% committed, come hell or high water, I am in it to win it. You have to have uh, the commitment of someone who says, I'm guaranteed I'm all in, there's times I'm not going to feel like doing this, but I'm committed to something greater. I'm committed to more than just losing weight, I'm committed to more than just feeling better, that I have an amazing purpose, that I have this, these things that I need to get accomplished in life, and so it really doesn't matter how I'm feeling, I'm 100% all in. So basically your commitment has to be a lot better than the kamikaze pilot on his 35, 35th mission, all right? <laughs> Just let that sink in, all right? The kamikaze pilot on his 35th mission. Okay, all right. So you guys understand that unless you change this right here, the strategy really doesn't matter. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. How many of you have actually heard of the Subway Diet? You guys ever heard of Subway Diet from like 10 or 15 years ago, right? Do you remember the Subway Diet? So there's this guy, Jared, who lost like 250 pounds because every day he walked to Subway he ate toxic protein and fat with a lot of grains and he ended up still losing 250 pounds. Now listen, when you look at that strategy, it's actually a pretty bad strategy, but the reason why he got results was because what? He was all in. Yeah, he was just 100% committed to doing it. So does the strategy matter? Yes, the mindset is actually what's more important. However, once you change that, then the strategy, then finding the right strategy, is now the next most important thing. So now what's important is, is can we give you the best strategy? The best strategy that's gonna give you great results that you're gonna look in a mirror and say, hey listen, I am so happy that I was applied, apply, that I was accepted, that I was challenged, and I'm so happy that I was proven, that I had what it takes in order to do this. So you guys ready to go over the plan, right? You guys ready? If you're ready, say I'm ready. ready. All right. Now listen, when it comes to nutrition, by the way, how many of you actually read the book prior to coming here? Mostly. All right, so half of you. The other half you can leave. You're not following directions. I'm just kidding. We'll stay. <laughs> so here's the thing, and here's the problem we run into with nutrition. We think, well, gosh, here's, here's nutrition. This is something that's complex. This is something that's complicated, and there's no way that I can decipher what's good and what's bad. So let's not make nutrition harder. So I'm all about how can we take something that actually may be a little bit complicated and how can we make it as simple as possible? How can we boil it down to some basic essentials so that today when you leave, you're actually gonna know more about nutrition than 99% of the population and I guarantee you're gonna know way more than your medical doctor when it comes to nutrition. Here is world-class nutrition in 25 words. Here's how easy it is. Here's how you can boil it down. Eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar. Keep your intake, uh, intake levels that support exercise, but do not support body fat. So eat meats and veggies, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar. Keep intake levels that support exercise, but not body fat. That's really easy. That's just 25 words. So you guys ready? Let's go home, all right? <laughs> so it's a very easy concept. And so it's not hard for you to understand, but you know what the hard thing is? To implement. So I'm gonna show you how you implement this and make it unbelievably easy, and you're gonna say, I wish I would've done this 25 years ago, okay? Let's talk about carbs real quick. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna go as much detail as the book. So if you haven't read the book, read the book, and it goes into much more detail about the why behind some of these different things. So um, are carbs good for you or bad for you? It depends, <laughs> right? It depends. So there's some diets out there that say no carbs or you got to be into ketosis. Some things say, hey, eat a bunch of carbs. In fact, 30 years ago they said eat tons of carbs. In fact, 60%, 70%, 80% of your calories should come from carbohydrates. But what happened to us? We started swearing off fat, we started eating more carbs, and then now we have literally 70% of our country that is either overweight or obese. So carbs are good because carbs provide us energy. So in that regards, carbs are bad when you're providing too much energy. Carbs are also bad in a sense because they also promote inflammation, which actually if you're wondering why you have high blood pressure, you have high cholesterol, uh, this like feeds cancer, this is cause 
uh, stress hormones to go out of, out of whack, it can mess up your hormones, that's when carbs actually become bad. So when you look at carbs, I do want you to actually to, con to, to be consuming carbs. In fact, we're going to set a target of about 25% of your total calories are coming from carbs. Wow, that doesn't seem like a whole lot. And it's not really because you don't need a ton of carbs in your nutrition. So which carbs are good, which carbs are bad? Now listen, there's something that's called the glycemic index. How many people have ever heard of the glycemic index? Yeah. This is like your template because I know that when we're done here, we're going to have one or two food Nazis <laughs> that say, what about this? 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 Is this good or is this bad? Well, let's not become a food Nazi. Let's just give you some general guidelines because when you look at carbs and you're looking at the glycemic index, a general rule of thumb is the best carbs for you are going to be the ones that are lowest on the glycemic index. And that low number is going to be anywhere from about 0 to 40, okay? So this is actually what this measures with the glycemic index is it measures how quickly it spikes your blood sugar. So if you're looking at it like 40 and under, these are going to be the best types of carbs for you. So this is going to be, does anybody know what this is right here? These things? These are called, I'll give you a hint, vegetables, and they begin with a V, vegetables, okay? If you haven't seen them in a while, they're at the grocery store, okay? Now, vegetables are always going to be the best for you. In fact, most vegetables are going to be with, have a glycemic index of under 40. Now, carrots, you're going to notice, have a glycemic index of 50, and actually carrots really aren't considered vegetables, all right? Now, carrots and things like that, we're going to say, hey, either or, they're not going to kill you, right? But you want to shoot for under 40. So this is going to be most vegetables, and it's also going to be some fruit. Some fruit that's the best is going to be things like Granny Smith apples or any kind of berry. Those are going to be the best fruits for you. Now, there's another thing, and this is what I utilize, is this is called Max Greens. How many of you know what greens are, evaporated greens? These are basically a bunch of vegetables that are ground up into powder form. This is a great way, if you don't want to sit in front of your plate and get 12 servings of vegetables that, that's this big, this is a great way to get about five to six servings of vegetables all at once because it's taking all the phytonutrients and grounding it down into about this much. So this is actually something that I utilize every single day and it's really, really good uh, as far as using this for anti-inflammation. How many of you suffer with inflammatory type issues? All right, so this is a, something we recommend with everyone, whether it be arthritis or autoimmune diseases, is, um, this is, or high blood pressure, or high cholesterol, this is great because it's extremely anti-inflammatory. Let's go into some of the gray areas of the carbs. So these are gonna be like 50 to 80. Basically, when you look at these carbs, and the reason why I say this, is because they're really, they're either neither good nor bad and it depends on your personal situation. Let's say you have high blood pressure, let's say you have high, high cholesterol, let's say you want to lose 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, maybe 100 pounds. These are carbs that you want to actually avoid at all costs. Now, I have a couple of CrossFit gyms, so you probably saw like those like, like stud athletes that were doing some workouts. I, for them, because they work out so much, like working out is their profession, <laughs> they actually need to eat these carbs in order to, so that they don't waste away to nothing. So these would be things like, uh, like your carrots and your bananas, your grapes, your pineapple. So most other fruit besides berries or Granny Smith apples is going to fall in this category. Now during the T28 challenge, I really want you to avoid these. Not maybe for the rest of your life, but to avoid these for the first 28 days. This would also be like, um, like whole grains. I definitely want you to avoid grains, like the plague, okay? This would also be things like sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes are going to have a little bit higher glycemic index. I know that at some point someone's probably thinking, hey Dr. Nate, didn't God make these though? Yes, he did. Here's what he didn't make. He didn't make the situation that you're in right now. <laughs> you did. So you kind of, you have to go off of these for a while. Listen, you made this, you created this, so you do have to avoid these. And if you avoid these, you're going to notice that you're going to have an amazing uh, increased uh, energy. 
you're going to be losing weight, uh, you're going to have a lot more mental acuity, you're just going to feel a lot better when you're really avoiding these. Now these are the things that you're going to avoid at all costs and these have a glycemic index of like 90 to 100. So when you're looking at the glycemic index, really how they measure this is they look at pure glucose. Pure glucose has 100 so it like takes your blood sugar and like spikes it really quickly. Then they measure everything else off of that. So these things are basically no different than, than basically pure glucose of just putting straight glucose into your blood. These would be things like white bread, white rice, baked potatoes, this would be like um, uh, fruit juice, uh, sugary colas, and even some of your condiments. Most of your condiments, I'd actually say all of them. So your dressings, your uh, ketchup, go ahead and look at the ingredients and you're going to say that every, see every single one of them is chock full of what? Either sugar or high fructose corn syrup. So you also want to avoid this. You guys know what this is? It's a finely granulated power that makes you feel really good and most people are addicted to it. No, it's not cocaine, it's sugar. Do you guys know, by the way, that sugar or anything with a lot of sugar and grains, do you know that it's just as addictive as heroin or cocaine or nicotine? Did you guys know that? But it tastes better. But it tastes better. <laughs> And, and what they've actually have found is why so many people struggle with this is because they actually say getting off of a sugar addiction is just as hard as overcoming like nicotine or alcohol. And whether you realize it or not, even people say, well, I'm not addicted to cocaine or smack or I'm not addicted to, you know, smoking or I'm not an alcoholic, but chances are if you're not addicted to those, you're probably addicted to sugar. And you don't, have to, you don't have to go to too many church potlucks to realize that, right? Yep. So you have to ask yourself, is my drug of choice, is it actually sugar? What's the best way to detox or get off of sugar? What's the best way? Cold turkey. You don't dabble in it. You don't say, ah, let's just lower it. The best way to always do it is to, cold, is to go cold turkey. And by the way, I'm going to tell you for the first couple of days as you start doing this, how do you think you're going to feel? Not great. Now some of you will be like, I'm okay, not great, I feel a little off. And some of you are going to say, where's Dr. Nate? Because if I see him, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this is going to pass. All you have to do is you just have to weather the storm. And by the way, this may take two to three days, and in some people it may, ten, it may take 10 to 14. All you have to do is you got to see yourself through. And if you make it past the 10 to 14 days, you know what happens? It's not like you're craving the baked potato or the bread for the rest of your life. You don't even crave it anymore. So you got to understand if you just make it to that point, you're, it's not something that you're going to have to go to, you know, like uh, Grains uh, Anonymous or something for the rest of your life. You're just not going to really even want them anymore. So things happen, change, well, change in your brain. Now what should you be drinking, okay? Well, hey, that's great, Dr. Nate, because uh, I don't drink sugary sodas, I drink diet sodas. Just as an FYI, the aspartame, the sucralose, the acylfame K, all those artificial ingredients are worse than sugar. They're more toxic, they cause more brain damage, uh, they cause more damage to your gastrointestinal system. So this right here, avoid it at all costs. Now if you said, hey, I'm gonna have, a, I'm gonna have some kind of drink, here's like the best things to do. If you drink a lot of soda or you, you know, if that's, if that's, your, um, if that's uh, what you do, here's what you can do instead is you can have Zevia. You guys ever heard of Zevia? They basically now have, I've been talking about it for about three years and you had to go to like a health food store. Actually most grocery stores are actually carrying this. So Stevia, or Zevia is a soft drink that instead of using sugar or using artificial sweeteners is actually sweetened with uh, Stevia. So while it's not, shouldn't be your number one drink of choice, if you're really like hankering for a soft drink, then just choose this instead. Now I know that everyone always asks me about coffee, because they're like, well what about coffee? Here's my take on coffee. If you're gonna have coffee, drink it, all right? This is such a, something that's so far down the ladder that you should fix, I'm gonna say, go ahead and drink it. Just don't put a bunch of sugar in it, okay? Don't put a bunch of sugar in it. So the best coffee is either going to be black or the best coffee is going to be called Bulletproof. How many of you have ever heard of Bulletproof coffee? Basically Bulletproof coffee is coffee and you put butter in and you put coconut oil in. 
and you douse the, 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 um, the coffee with tons of healthy fat. So you can have it black or you can have coconut oil. And there's tons of recipes that you can see online for bulletproof coffee. Now, the best thing that you should be consuming though is called what? Water. Water. Okay, so water. And drink a lot of it. A lot of water. You guys are going to be working out, so you're going to need to increase your water intake probably by about 64 ounces a day. Increase of what you're actually already doing. Okay. Now what about fat? Is fat good for you or is fat bad for you? It depends. <laughs> it depends on where the fat is coming from. Now, if it's healthy fat, healthy fat is amazing for you. And the reason why is because fat literally makes up like everything that's important inside your body. You have 76 trillion cells in your body. They all have what's called a lipid bilayer, which is made of what? Fat. So actually all of your cells, what lets things in and lets things out, so how it brings in nutrients and how it, 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 it lets out waste is based on how much healthy fat you're consuming. How about your hormones? Uh, like, raise your hand if you know someone with a thyroid issue. <laughs> yeah. Do you know someone? Everyone knows someone. Like, so like your foundation for your thyroid, your foundation for your neurochemicals like serotonin uh, um, uh, that support your adrenal gland, adrenal function, your energy, uh, even men, your testosterone, all the foundation for this is actually fat. So you actually need a lot of healthy fat and in fact half of your calories, like a baseline, half of your calories should actually come from fat. Now it just depends on where you're getting the fat from. Where are you getting the fat from? So these are the, going to be the best sources of fat. Now, beef, chicken, and fish. These things are great for you. And the best ones are going to be grass-fed beef. They're going to be wild-caught fish. And they're going to be free-range poultry and eggs. So you guys know why that is. There's no added hormones. There's no, um, there's no like inflammatory grains that are in them. And, um, and you're also, they're gonna have the lowest amount of toxicity, okay? This is something that if you're gonna invest in your food, invest in this. I would actually say that if you're, people say, well, what about organic vegetables and whatnot? I would say if you're gonna make the choice between organic vegetables and produce versus free range grass fed or, or, or wild caught, choose the meat first because at least you can wash off some of the pesticides with the vegetables, but you can't wash out antibiotics and, you know, and toxins. You can't wash it out of the meat. So these are going to be the best sources of fat. This is also going to be anti-inflammatory. One of the things that you're going to notice is that if you truly are changing the way that you are fueling your body, you're going to notice that things, a lot of like knee pain, a lot of joint pain, things like that will start to go away. How many of you wake up in the morning and you're like, I can't move. A lot of it, think of what you ate the day before. So doing this is going to make a huge difference. Now another one is virgin coconut oil. You guys ever heard of coconut oil? Another one would be like MCT oil or medium chain triglyceride oil. This is actually all saturated fat. And saturated fat is not bad for you. Did you know that? It has to come from the right source. So saturated fat in its natural state will never cause, never cause you to have heart disease. Did you guys know that? Now, virgin olive oil, this is important. If you use uh, virgin uh, olive oil, don't cook with it, finish the food. So don't make it sizzle. The reason why is you turn it rancid. So you, don't, you want to put it on food after you're done cooking it. These also would be things like organic nut butters, almond butter, cashew butter, uh, how about this? You guys know what these are? Yeah, so really nuts. So nuts, preferably how should they be? They should be raw, okay? Raw nuts. Another step would be, would to actually be, would actually to soak and sprout them. Uh, that will break down some of the enzymes that will help you digest your nuts a little bit better. I actually, uh, you guys ever heard of Brothers Nuts? You can actually order the nuts online. They'll ship them to you. And so these are soaked in sprouted nuts and they're, they're flavored and they're fantastic. And so I, like one of the go-to snacks that I have is actually nuts. So things like cashews, which you could debate if they're a nut or not, but let's call them a nut. Things like cashews, almond, Brazilian nuts, um, uh, walnuts, 
pistachios, these things are going to be great for you. They're filled with tons of healthy fat. Now, is butter good for you? Yep, butter is good for you. You guys see the Time Magazine, 30 years ago they said butter's bad, eat margarine. Then they said, whoops, we made a mistake, go ahead and eat butter, margarine's bad for you. So again, it, it goes closest to how it was actually created. Now, how many of you absolutely love eating fish? You do. I don't, by the way, yeah. Because I have goldfish. I couldn't imagine eating fish. We, we have this bond with each other. We have this amazing bond. I couldn't imagine like filleting my goldfish or anything. Um, now listen, I'm going to say if I actually did a blood test on all of you and we measured like your omega-3 fatty acids inside of your body, I'd imagine that probably 85-90% of you are going to be deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. So one of the things you do to cover your bases is take a quality omega-3 fatty acid that should have about 1.5 to 2 grams of what's known as EPA and DHA. These are your animal sources of omega-3 fatty acids. So these things are actually like any kind of omega-3s that come from a pharmaceutical grade source are going to be great in order to, for like anti-inflammation, uh, helps with brain function, cognitive function and things like that, right? These are the bad ones, all right? Now how many of you are like, oh, I can't believe this. You're just in here and you're praying, please don't, please, not this food, don't, please don't name this food. This is basically any meat that is commercially raised, so this is your meat, your farm raised fish, and like basically your commercial uh, poultry, all right? So uh, how many of you are really familiar, like you knew exactly what this stuff is, yeah. <laughs> So this stuff is going to be really anti-inflammatory. This is when something that's good, fat, this is when it turns really bad inside of your body, okay? So this would be anything that's like commercial. Now, uh, anything that you see, so anything that you buy at a store and it comes in a package, chances are it's probably not going to be all that great for you because the best foods don't have an ingredients list. So if you're going to the grocery store and you're like, ah, you know, this has a package and let's see if it's good for me, chances are it probably isn't. And the reason why is because these foods have partially hydrogenated oils in them. Do you guys know why they hydrogenate oils? Shelf yeah, because if they had them at room temperature, they would melt. <laughs> so they add these hydrogen bonds so that when you pick up the package, it's not leaking, you know? Because no one would want to buy a little Debbie that's all soggy. Who would want that? So anything that has partially hydrogenated vegetable oil or fully hydrogenated, which you may see like peanut butter, have that. Um, this is so bad for you. This is like, these are, it's like a direct contributor to heart disease. So you want to avoid these at all costs. So these would be like even having fully hydrogenated would be your ice creams and your cookies, your peanut butters. These are going to be your vegetable oils like corn oil or canola oil or you know just vegetable oil. These things really are not good for you. And the reason why is because they're rancid and they're inflammatory. You guys want to know why your joints hurt all the time? Think about the oils and the fats that you're eating. Um, so like this, you're going to notice like how many of you love potato chips? I know that you said that you asked about potatoes, right? <laughs> so like potato chips, number one, they're all carbs and they're like, well listen, they only have three ingredients. What are the ingredients? Potatoes, which is sugar, vegetable oil, which is a bad fat, and salt. Now, is salt bad for you? Not if it's sea salt. That's never going to cause problems with your kidneys or with your blood pressure or anything like that. But when you look at it, two out of the three ingredients, 66% of it is actually bad ingredients. So even if it has like a couple ingredients and they're all bad, <laughs> it's still bad for you. All right? Now, let's talk about protein. Okay? Now here's the easy thing about protein, is that if protein and fats are usually coupled together, right? So you have a grass-fed steak, you're going to notice there's two things in it, fat and protein. So here's the easy thing about protein, is that if it's a good fat, it will also have good protein. Now, here's one of the things that you do have to avoid. Have you guys ever looked at the ingredients of, of Lunchables? Now there's some like Lunchables, for example, there's protein in it and I don't even know if it's like a protein the body even recognizes it because it's, there's so many chemicals that are in it. So just the fact that, you know, like if there's some like diet plans out there and, and they're like, uh, um, you know, like you can eat, you know, no carbs, but you can eat all the protein. 
but you look at what the protein that that person is eating after three months they're basically have like like more chemicals than like someone who's been embalmed inside of their body now listen they've lost weight but are they really healthier as a result? You can look at someone with cancer and they, when they die, they're not overweight. In fact, they're severely underweight and they're severely malnourished. But you wouldn't call someone who's, you know, dies at a normal weight from cancer, you wouldn't call them healthy. So the goal is, is that we're actually making you healthy. Be, helping you be healthy is more important than losing weight. It's more important than getting in, you know, having amazing fitness. It's all about being healthy. Now, you guys ever heard of whey protein, right? So whey protein. So, because this is a, kind of doesn't fall into any kind of category. So, like, what about, like, is whey protein healthy for you? And 100% unequivocally, yes, it is. Well, I'm going to say it depends. And it depends on? The source, right? So, whey protein, the reason why whey protein is really, really good is whey protein actually has all of these precursors for what's known as glutathione. Glutathione actually helps your body do what? You guys know what it does? Helps your body detox. So you want your body in a constant state of detoxification. How many of you are like, I'm probably pretty toxic? Probably pretty toxic. Listen, if you're not even on one medication, you're toxic. So um, glutathione helps the body to detoxify. The other thing is, is too, is whey protein has this really unique ability to get absorbed into the body and go straight into the muscle cells to be used. So whey protein is actually some of the most easily absorbed and utilized type of protein and it doesn't cause a lot of stress in the body trying to break it down because it goes right into the body. So I am a huge, huge fan of whey protein and in fact this is one of the things that I utilize that helped me lose like 30 pounds in about six weeks was utilizing whey protein. Now, it must come, it must come from, just like your meat, grass-fed, hormone-free, antibiotic-free, because you're not what you eat, you're what they ate. So if you're eating stuff that they ate, it's gonna end up inside of your body. So whey protein should come from concentrate as well, not from isolate, it should come from concentrate. It's closer to the source. So, you guys should have that sheet that you have in front of you. So, the sheet that says your macros, and these are your macronutrient recommendations, okay? Now, we've kind of whittled this down into a science. And actually, since we've been using this template, for example, our last challenge that we had, I think, I think we had like 300 pounds were lost. <laughs> it was incredible. Like the average, I think, was 11 or 12 pounds per person. You know, so we had some people who didn't do very well because of this, but the people who followed through were easily into the 18 to 25 to 30 pounds if they needed to, okay? So we have you on your core plan, okay? So we have you on what's known as a core plan. Basically, you're gonna be having 50% fat, 25% protein, 25% carbs. This is a good place to start. Now, further down the road, you can always switch to something that's advanced plan. And the only basic difference between core plan and advanced plan is what? Less carbs and more what? More fat. And that's the, the difference between the two. So I want you on these ratios for the first 28 days. And I found that, that this is the best nutrition plan, especially because you guys are going to be doing something else. And what is it? You're going to be exercising. And particularly, you're gonna be doing high intensity exercising. So I found that when people go on to here, they do great, but they just keep losing weight and losing weight. So this will actually help to even preserve muscle, okay? Eat meats and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch and no sugar. Keep your intake levels that support exercise, but not body fat. Does that make sense? Are you guys feeling a little bit better now? Like, okay, I, this is good. Now, now you know what to do. Now, how many of you are just like, oh, how am I gonna do this? <laughs> how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna show you something that you're gonna start off for the next seven to 10 days that's super easy for you to do, okay? Super easy. I'm gonna show you something that's actually gonna help you save money at the grocery store, and I'm gonna show you something that's probably gonna save you an hour. How many of you are like, I don't have an hour and a half to make all these meals? Please, don't make me make these elaborate meals. I can't cook, by the way. I cannot cook. <laughs> that is not my gifting, is cooking. All right, someone asked me to take something to a recipe day or to a potluck. 
I, I'll like, I'll even buy cookies. <laughs> I'll like, I'll buy unhealthy food because I'm that bad at actually cooking. So I'm going to show you in just a little bit how you make this incredibly easy. All right. Now, exercise. Now I know that you guys are here and you're expecting to exercise. If we went, all went over to Target and I said, I want you to go and I want you to ask 10 people. Go ask 10, 10 strangers and if they you know, don't think you're weird and they answer you, ask them this question. Say, hey, I'm going to give you the assignment to get into shape. Tell me what you're going to do to get into shape. What is 99.9% .9 of the population going to say to you? Yeah, so they're going to say, well, exercise. And then you say, well, what kind of exercise? What do you need to do to get in shape? And everyone's going to say what? Cardio. Run. Cardio. You need to do cardio. You've got to run. And well, how long do you need to run? Oh, at least an hour. You, you have to run for a whole entire hour. And nothing could have been further from the truth. Like 15 years ago, I thought, oh, I'm going to get in shape, so I need to run. So I started running. And I, I became a good runner. <laughs> the problem was I kept putting on more weight. And like, can you literally run yourself into obesity? And the answer is yes. Now, if you look at marathon runners, what do they look like? Skinny. They're like this, right? They're skinny. But if you actually took their body fat, do you guys know that they actually have pretty high body fat? So the problem is, is when you think, hey, I need to go and run for hours and hours and hours, you inherently run into a problem. And the problem you run into is that in order for you to be an efficient runner, your body says, I need to make you as light as possible. So what it actually does is it starts to burn what in, uh, as well as fat? Muscle. muscle. And the problem is, is that you start burning muscle and you become lighter and lighter and you're on the scale and you're like, I'm losing weight, I'm losing weight. But as you're burning muscle, you know what happens to your metabolism too? Because if you don't have muscle, you don't have an engine. And if you don't have an engine, you don't have to put gas into it. So the engine does this and your metabolism does this, which means in order to keep that up, you have to continue to do what? Eat less and less. Now, people who run for long periods of time, they also are very inefficient fat burners. The reason why is that if you're going to run for an hour or do a Stairmaster for an hour or the elliptical for an hour, you're training your body to burn fat while you exercise. You're also training your body to not burn fat while you rest. So your body says, well, if you're going to exercise for an hour a day, I need to be really efficient at storing fat while you're resting so that you have that available when you <laughs> work out. You see how you start running into problems with this? Now, pay attention to this person. This is a person who is a sprinter, okay? Now, is all running bad? No, running's not bad, but running for long durations over and over and over again can be. Now, a sprinter, what does a sprinter do? Sprinter does these short bursts of high intensity, short duration exercise, followed by these intermittent periods of rest. So, his workout is very short, but it's also very intense. Now, during his workout, uh, if you look at someone who is doing explosive movements, his body says, well, if I'm doing explosive movements, I need what? What gives me explosive movement? Muscle, muscle does. I need to actually make myself explosive and I need to put on muscle. Now, during that exercise, he's actually only burning sugar. Did you know that? He's burning sugar only. This is the beauty of what happens is that his body says, I need to be really good then at storing sugar while I'm resting and instead use fat as an energy source. So he's good at storing sugar and burning fat while he's resting. So would you rather burn fat for 30 minutes or would you rather burn fat for 30 or 23 hours and 50 minutes a day? And so this is why the body's preferred method of exercise is high intensity short duration. Functional. What do I mean by functional? Everyday movements. Everyday movements, right? How many of you have gone to a doctor and he says, he says, uh, I don't want you deadlifting. I don't want you picking something off the ground. You mean to tell me, doctor, if I drop my pencil, you don't want me picking it up? 
So think of everything that you need to do to be great at everyday life. You need to pick things up off the ground, push things over your head. You need to squat because you need to get off the toilet. And if you guys can't get off the toilet, your kids are putting you in the nursing home. They don't want to deal with you. So what we do is we do these elements of functional movements done at a high intensity for a very short duration and you mix these different elements up in all of these different ways so that you'll never do a same workout ever again. Or I should say very rarely will you ever repeat your workouts. So it's always different and that's what actually keeps it really fresh and really fun and really exciting. So what we're going to be doing and in fact we're going to be doing this today metabolic conditioning high intensity short duration functional so here's what it does it increases human growth hormone that's responsible for building muscle burning fat it increases testosterone guys you see all the guys with all these problems with low T like if you want to increase your, your testosterone eat the right types of fats get your nerve system healthy and then make sure you're doing high intensity exercise and you can skip the three hundred dollar a month uh, testosterone gel that they're taking so it's going to decrease cortisol in fact if you have a pen write down this write cortisol down this is very important it improves the body to, the body's ability to consume and deliver oxygen it enhances your anaerobic and your aerobic energy systems. Now we have people who come in, they say, I want to become a better marathon runner. And I'm like, why would you want to do that? But if you want to, I can still help you do that. Or I want to be better at 5Ks and I can help you do that. And in fact, I ran a 5K once and I ran my fastest one I ever ran by not running. <laughs> so I was actually doing this kind of, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go, go do a 5K and I beat my previous time by two minutes afterburn so it increases metabolism during and after exercise so we want to increase like doing running just doing regular running doesn't increase your metabolism after exercise but metabolic conditioning will and it in significantly increases your lean muscle mass okay it will increase your lean muscle mass ladies how many of you are scared I don't want to get too bulky it will never happen I promise you like you see these people these women who have like all of these muscles are you going to be spending six hours a day doing this no if you're not spending six hours a day you will not look like that so men this is the best way to increase your muscle mass so like bodybuilding and things like that I haven't done bodybuilding for like 12 years and in fact I don't pay attention to what my body looks like if you do the right movements and the right elements and you mix them up and all these different things your body will actually become very aesthetically pleasing just based on doing this types of exercise and it will also make you better at life and generally a more awesome person and I can promise you that hey let me talk to the men just for a second like like men how many of you have felt you felt like you've lost like a little bit of your swagger uh, I, uh, I I like let me tell you something so like when I was 33 I had, I, I had, uh, you know, like we had three kids. They were like four, two, and just being born. And I'm sitting here pra in practice. I'm working 60, 70 hours a week, and you know, and, and I'm, I'm trying to be all things to all people. So what did I let go? What did I let go? Me. <laughs> let go of me. And I lost like some of that, just that swagger, just that, mm, you know, like men, like just this. Am I speaking to you, man? Like just that edge I really had lost it and I can tell you that when I started doing this it brought that back like that uh, that swagger and I remember my wife she's like what happened to you I don't know what happened but I really like it <laughs> <laughs> so men this will help you get your swagger back and listen the, um, the uh, both of these people they can both be the same age how you want to age is hundred percent up to you so you can choose to be the guy on the right or you can choose to be the guy on the left and you can have the best excuses in the world but nature doesn't care nature will not give you a, a, an exemption from um, from having ex, you know for having excuses doesn't matter if you're busy doesn't matter if you're time crunched it doesn't matter if you want to or not nature says it doesn't matter okay so guys remember cortisol I want to talk about cortisol real quick so cortisol is called the stress hormone and I'm going to guarantee that most of you have too much cortisol. Cortisol is what helps you is what helps you in times of stress, and it's beneficial when you have stress. Cortisol is not beneficial when the stress never leaves. How many of you have stress in your life that it never leaves? It is day in, day out. 
So if you don't sleep enough, you have high cortisol. If you are stressed at work, you have high cortisol. If you run <laughs> for long periods of time, you have high cortisol. And cortisol, here's what it does. It increases appetite and hunger. It increases your blood sugar levels. It increases fat stores around the midsection. For men and ladies, and ladies, it also causes fat storage around the button thighs. Uh, low energy, it will impair your sleep. How many of you feel really awake at night, very tired in the morning? That is a cortisol issue. But it also, in fact, I can give you all these reasons. Nobody cares until I say, Lady, it's, ladies, it's the reason why you have cellulite. And everyone's like, huh, what? It's the reason why you have cellulite. So high cortisol actually causes cellulite deposition. And this is why if you're trying to target cellulite and you go running for long periods of time, it's why it will never go away because you, you're not improving your cortisol levels, all right? All right, so let's go over the T28 challenge and I wanna go over with you some tips on what we can do to make this very easy. So can I show you something that you can do that's very, very easy? How many people want it easy, not hard? So literally, I want to take all the guesswork out of it. I want to, like, uh, I remember the first challenge we did, I gave people a huge grocery list. And I'm like, go to the grocery store and get all this. Someone called me up, like, the next day, so angry. They said, I went to the grocery store, I had no idea where, thought, where all this was, and um, I spent six hours at the grocery store and I want to kill you. And she's like, I'm already stressed out that I'm actually doing this. And now I have to go to the grocery store for six hours and then I have to spend an hour every day preparing all of these meals. She's like, I'm already out and I didn't even start. So I'm going to show you something that starts you off that's going to be very, very easy that's going to start you off in the right direction. Because I've noticed if you can start right, you'll finish right. Okay? So here's how we're going to make this. All this nutrition stuff that I just taught you, here's how you actually do this. So here's what I want you to do. Breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch, we're gonna, we're gonna make a smoothie. All right, so you're gonna be drinking your nutrition. All right, let's go ahead and let's make this. Bring this here, bring this up, up here just a little bit closer, okay? Let's bring this over here. So I'm gonna show you uh, how long it's gonna take for your breakfast. I'm gonna show you how long it's gonna take for your breakfast. All right, so you guys have a blender bottle? All right, pretty easy, you can get that anywhere. You're gonna put women eight ounces or men 12 ounces of unsweetened coconut milk. Coconut milk is really good because it has good fat. Unsweetened has no carbs. Quick question. Can and solid or the container that's Either one. I think the can is a little bit better though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So eight to 12. Let's go ahead and put this down so everybody can see it. So eight to 12 ounces of unsweetened coconut milk. Next thing you're gonna do is women, you're gonna put one scoop, or men, put 1.5 scoops of grass-fed whey protein. Now you're gonna notice in your sheet that we gave you, we've already figured that out if you're gonna be doing that, so that you know what you need to be eating at night for your meal. So Kelly is putting in a scoop and a half. Now I may put some other things in there too, like, you know, like glutamine for muscle growth, or uh, you know, some carnitine, things like that. But we're not going to get in, into that right now. Uh, you're going to put a half a scoop of Max Greens. The reason why you want a half a scoop versus a full scoop is that it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> right? So that way a half a scoop we found actually hides the taste. And then you're going to put one tablespoon of either coconut oil or MCT oil. If you put coconut oil and put it in a blender, it'll make it a little bit thicker. Um, but for me, I just put, and we're going to just guess, we're going to put a tablespoon, it's going to have 14 grams of fat in the uh, coconut oil, all right? So you're going to go ahead and you're going to mix that up. And I actually have Kelly comes to my house in the morning to, 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 to make this, all right? Morning and noon, right? Yeah. All right, and then uh, so this is your breakfast. So this took about how long to make? Yeah, so about a minute it took to take. Took about 10 seconds to drink. Ooh, that's my lunch actually right now. And this actually doesn't taste bad. It tastes good. The fat in it actually makes it taste good. That's your breakfast. That's your lunch. 
Now, in between you're going to have some snacks. So what do you have for snacks? Raw nuts, raw vegetables, berries, Granny Smith apples, uh, or we have something like if you're here at the gym, we have things like a perfect bar, which are, which are good too. Now, people say how much nuts? Like how many nuts should I have? Everybody hold your hand out and do this. There you go. Yeah, without measuring your food, whatever you can fit into your hand. Not both of them, not two, one hand. It's one hand, that's it. So if you can do this, for you, your size of hand, that, that is going to be approximately how much that you're going to need. Same thing with berries or for a Granny Smith apple, a medium sized one. So don't go like find a genetically modified one that's like this big, all right? And no, a taffy apple does not count, all right? Here's, what, here's how you make it really easy. So you have total about four minutes of meal prep in your whole day. That's actually faster than going through the drive-thru <laughs> at, a, at, a, at, a, uh, at, a, at a at a restaurant. So you have about four minutes of meal prep per day, and then at dinner, what you're going to have is you're going to have on that on that sheet that we gave you. It's going to show you how many carbs you should be consuming, and how many grams of protein you should be consuming at night if you're doing the two shakes. Okay. Now. Now, as a guideline, women, you want to be at around 20 to 30 grams of protein at your dinner, and then men, depending on how much muscle mass, you're going to be anywhere from 25, maybe to 45 grams of protein at dinner. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make vegetables, and you're going to make unlimited as much as you want. You're not even going to measure that. And the reason why is if you're choosing low glycemic vegetables, you can have a whole plate and there's only going to be maybe 20 grams of carbs or 25 grams of carbs for a whole plate. So you can literally have as much as you want. Um, now, how much is, uh, how much would be like, for example, like 30 grams of protein? It's actually not that much. And in fact, if you would look at like a deck of cards size chicken breast, that's going to have about 21 to 22 grams of protein. So you're having like a smallish type chicken breast and that's literally all you need. You don't need that much protein. You don't need that much. So you want to choose more fat over more protein. This is pretty easy, isn't it? This is how like we found that you make it so easy that, that um, it's not going to stress you out. You don't have to become an iron chef that you're doing it and it's so easy that this is going to work. And by the way, as your gift for today, you guys are all going to get protein and you're going to get greens. So you guys are actually getting that today. So all you have to do is you just have to get some coconut oil and some coconut milk and then you can actually start this. You can get the coconut oil. You can guys can order it off of Amazon. You probably if you ordered it today, you have it by Monday. But you can also get it at a health food store. So we're going to give you enough, enough of the greens for the whole 28 days and enough of the protein that will last you men for about seven days and women will last you for about 10 days. So after the 10 days, you can do two things. You can continue doing this, uh, which is what I recommend, or on your resource page, we have tons of recipes that you can start making your own recipes. And I recommend that you only choose literally three or four recipes and just like, take those recipes to the bank. Use them and just get really good at three to four recipes. Don't try to like, get nine or 10 or 15. Just get really good at three or four. Because you're going to do this for how long? Your whole life. So next month, add one recipe. And within three years, you, you, have a, you have 36 recipes that you could be using. One of the things that I found is the problem with a lot of people is that they always think they have time. Well, I can do it later, right? And then you wake up and you're like, I don't have any more time. But the other good thing is that you do have time. <laughs> That's also the good part is you do have time, that we're so impatient. That we think that everything has to be like, like you know, uh, accomplished within a short period of time but when you look at health health is a journey and start adding one recipe a month that's all you have to do if I said you need to add 40 in two weeks you'd be you wouldn't even start because it would be so overwhelming so make sure you guys we all have all of that for you so you guys are gonna pick that up today okay now 
for those of you who want to just like, that you're going to take it to the next level, like I'm going to just do this, what I just went over, I'm going to do that for the entire 28 days. At any time during the 28 days, you guys can pick up the rest of your stuff and we have a coupon for you in that folder for 10% off. So you guys, um, you guys are actually making everything back <laughs> from joining the challenge. Someone told me the challenge is expensive and I'm like, actually if you do it, you'll make it all back. So women, what you'll need is you'll need like two more of these um, and then men, you'll need three more. So you'll need three more and you can pick that up at our office or we may have some extra today. Now, he, these are some additional things. These are not abs, like mandatory, but these are things that are gonna help you. Adding more healthy fat in the form of omegas. These are just things that I do every single day. Uh, max fit, so max fit, remember we talked about cortisol? Uh, max fit, the reason why I take that is I tend to get stressed out a little bit. I know, I'm not supposed to, but I do tend to get stressed out. And max fit has something in it that's called ashwagandha that helps to lower cortisol. In fact, clinically, ashwagandha has been proven to lower cortisol by 33%. So this is like a lifesaver in regards to getting rid of cortisol. It helps the body to shed excess belly fat, uh, and it also helps your sleep because it will help you to be wakeful in the morning and tired at night. And most people are actually, how many of you are backwards? Tired in the morning and wide awake at night, okay? Now the other thing is vitamin D. Raise your hand if you have, uh, raise your hand if you know what your vitamin D levels are. This is actually something that a lot of people, uh, they don't check. Um, one of the, there's a research study out there that was fascinating and I looked at this and I'm like, that explains a lot. So did you know that vitamin D influences the function of 1500 genes inside your body? Including the immune system. So this is why everyone gets sick in the winter time, because they're not out in the sun getting exposed to so you make vitamin D. Well, one thing they also found is that, you know, like they found that the more uh, fat a person went on, or uh, put on, the more their vitamin D levels went down. So what you found is people with more body fat have lower levels of vitamin D, which is like a whammy for everything in regards to their health. But they also said that as vitamin D levels went down, you had, there's a hormone inside your body called adiponectin that helps the body burn fat. Which means as your vitamin D levels go down, fat goes up. Which is also true in the winter time too. So everyone should be getting, I recommend a minimum of 5,000 IUs per day, particularly now because you're not going to be going out in the sun. And some people, I've had them take either, even 10 to 15,000, especially if they have a high level of body fat because it's harder to get vitamin D into the blood if you have a higher amount of body fat. So these are some extra things that you can do to consider. And over the next 28 days, all you have to do is you have to just, when you come to my office, just come to the office, present that coupon, and whatever you want to get, you'll have 10% off for the remainder of the 28 days. Make sense? All right. Here's how you can expect to feel for the next three to 14 days. Just so I don't have anybody emailing me, calling me, and, you know, and whatnot, all right? So tired, lethargic, flu-like symptoms, mild brain fog, irritable, this is a big one. Sweating, some of you will sweat a lot. And you may have some intense sugar cravings. And here's what I found. The first one to two days are actually really easy. And the reason why they're really easy is you're not a very efficient fat burner. However, you still have a lot of stored sugar inside of your body. So your, your liver and your muscles can store about five to 600 grams of sugar. So like the first day, you're like, you're not eating a whole lot, you're changing, excuse me, I'm burping from this smoothie. You're, you're, um, you're not eating a lot of sugar, but you're still feeling really good. And that's because your body is using some of the stored sugar. So if you look at about 600 grams, that's about 2,400 calories and depending on what your basal metabolic rate is, that will last you for anywhere from a day to maybe a day and a half. And then what happens is, is you kind of, everything hits the fan and your body is like, whoa, I don't know how to burn fat as an energy source. So your blood sugar starts to go down and then you start to have some of these symptoms. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to do what? Go grab some. Sugar, because I'm hypoglycemic and I may die. You will not die. I promise you that. All you have to do is stick to it and your body will adapt. I guarantee your body will adapt. I know when I was doing this, I felt good for the first day and a half. Two days, I'm like, oh man, 
and then the third day, I, I, uh, I don't even know what I did. I don't even remember. It was, <laughs> it was this, it, my, I had like absolutely no energy. I, in fact, your first week of working out, you may not do great. Doesn't matter. You just show up. You just show up. And if you do this, most people after seven days are like, this is the best that I felt in the last 25 or 30 years. And if, you, if you're sticking to it, and even the worst of the worst people, they'll turn a corner after 10, 11, 12 days. All you have to do is stick to it. The cravings go down, the, the energy starts to go up. All you have to do is stick to it because your body now will become an efficient fat burner. Your body will become an efficient fat burner. So these are normal symptoms of your body trying to normalize its blood sugar. Don't go to the pantry and don't rate it and eat a bunch of chips just so because you'll feel better right away, but you're going to put yourself another day or two behind. Okay? Now, no plan B. Take out the trash. What does that mean? Go home, take it out, throw it out. Don't donate to the food pantry to the, so that they have to come do the T28 challenge. Just put it in a field and burn it, all right? So don't tempt yourself with, don't say, I found that people are like, well, just in case, I'll put it in the back of the pantry. If it's there, you'll, um, you'll, 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 you'll use it. Have an accountability partner. How many of you have, have an accountability partner right now? And one of the things that we've set up for you with the emails, uh, with our Facebook group, uh, things like that is accountability. Because I found that when you try to do it by yourself, you, you really do fail. The people who are like, I'm not going to tell anyone I'm going to go over this corner and let's just kind of try it out. <laughs> no, you're, you're done. I already know you're toast. If you're trying to do this by yourself, it'll, it'll, it'll never happen. Or someone who's just, I'm trying this out like a good idea type of thing. Nope, because in three days it's going to get hard and I know you're not going to follow through. How about taking your goals public? You know what that means? Uh, like, yeah, get other people involved. I mean, like the beauty of it today is now there's social media and if you want, you could have a thousand of your Facebook friends know that you're doing this. A thousand people that are watching you, a thousand people that are cheering you on, or maybe a thousand people that are looking at you to fail. Whatever, it, whatever, whatever motivates you. Whatever motivates you. Now. I know uh, one of the things that we have actually done is when you're getting the emails, we're going to be given an award at the end called the Maximizer Award and this is the people who has the, the most amount of social media influence. So every day in your email, I give you an idea of taking a picture of yourself doing something, posting it to your Facebook, you know, Facebook page with the hashtag T28 and so that people can actually watch you on your journey. They may be cheering you on or they may be hoping you fail, but either way, whatever is actually going to motivate you. So take those goals public and then make a war plan. So on the sheet or on their uh, resource page that we have at MaximizeWeightLoss.net, so after you enter in that password, you'll see a war plan. It's a blank sheet and this is actually one of the things that I do every Saturday is I make out a war plan for what? My next week. So everything is accounted for. So every hour, every minute is accounted for. That means that I'm writing in relaxation. That means I, I'm writing in, I'm going to do nothing at this point. But I'm also writing in when I'm going to work out, when I'm spending time with my family, when I'm, do, like, when I'm doing all of these things, it's written out and it's planned out. Because if you don't plan, I found you waste a lot of time. And in fact, when you do your war plan today and sit down, you're going to be like, I waste a lot of time. <laughs> I waste a lot of time. And uh, actually once I started doing this, uh, people ask me, how are you able to do this? So I have a chiropractic office. I have two gyms and you know, kids are in sports. They're like, how, I don't understand how you can do that. And I said, make a war plan. Figure out how much time you're wasting every week and you'll be like, I can do way more. Because my life is all about how can I impact as many people as possible. So I'm not happy if I'm not impacting a lot of people.